Hey everyone, Kyle once again, and welcome back to another movie review, or should I say another, or another rant, and back on the Batman franchise, <clears throat> the ones of Tim Byrne and Jill Schumacher. So again, to the end of this particular Batman franchise, finally have reached the one that I did not want to, well, I have to review because since I since I reviewed the the other Batman film, so I have to I have to review the other one. But this one, yes, Batman Robin, a film that I was not I, I was not looking forward to doing because it's how horrible it is. But do I have to do it just you know just to complete the the franchise? Now, Batman Robin. I'm sure that what everybody knows about. Released in the summer of 1997, and it's considered one of the considered one of the one of the worst movies of all time, slash superhero films of all time. And for for your for your for for the casting, it stars Arnold Schwarzenegger. As Mr. Freeze, George Clooney as Batman, Chris O'Donnell comes back as Robin, Uma Thurman as Poison Ivy, and Elisa Silverstone as Batgirl. And of course, uh, Michael Goff and Pat Hingle come back as Commissioner Gordon and Alfred. And like I said Joel Schumacher comes back to direct. And. I just don't know more what I can say about it. The film is pretty much what everybody says is a, is a piece of shit. That's basically what it is. Sucks. Big time. And... I just have no more words what I can say about it. But I will say this, okay. Now, I do know, I definitely remember... Like I said about what I mentioned about Batman Forever, I remember growing up with the movie. I remember seeing it during the summer of 1995. I absolutely remember this film, seeing it from the summer of 1997. I absolutely do, really do. And yes, back when I well, back back growing up, uh, since I enjoyed Batman and Rob, Batman Forever as a kid. And yes, I did uh, as a kid. I did enjoy this movie. I did because you know, which it's funny because this one is the most out of the whole franchise. You know, more than Batman Forever. Mostly, it's this is the most kid friendly. You know. Campy, silly, as best or worst. But yes, I remember growing up with this film as a kid. And I remember back in when I was a kid, I enjoyed the film. But since you know when you get older in age, you you adapt more and you acknowledge a why it's so horrible and and yeah, I definitely understand why. But and plus and what this is basically it's because of. Now this is when now all of like all the, the the Batman films of the anthology box that I have they're all two two disc conditions. This one I, this one I have to say I this think this film I don't think it deserves a two disc condition. This one I on this particular one I don't think it does does deserve it. And it has the features you know it's the commentary with Joel Schumacher has the shadows of the bad the cinematic saga of the Dark Knight Part Six an additional scene Alfred's lost love. Beyond the Duck Batman Documentary Gallery, the bigger, bolder, brighter production design of Batman Robin. Well, brighter, because yeah, this is definitely much more brighter in the film. Uh, maximum Overdrive, the vehicles of Batman Robin, Dress to Thrill, the costumes of Batman Robin, Frozen Freaks and fem Femme Fails, the makeup, and Bat the makeup of Batman Robin, Freeze Frame, the visual effects of Batman Robin. Four music videos... Um, the end is the beginning is the end by Smashing Pumpkins, Foolish Games by Jewel, Gotham City by R. Kelly, Look Into My Eyes by Bone Thugs in, Har in Harmony, and then the heroes and the villain profile galleries. So yeah, this all uh, this is a, just a big two disc for one a two disc for one of the worst movies of all time, slash superhero films of all time. And everything I would say, well, 
okay, for one for one of the things that okay, one thing's a one of the very few things I could say positively about this film. One of the one of the few things. But it doesn't help save the film in, in the least bit. Now, the film is a much bigger budget than than Batman Forever. Batman Forever was like a hundred million dollars. This is like about a hundred and twenty five million. Now I could I could definitely say I could see the budget with the the money was put to good use. The look of the film is still a uh, is still a fantasy, definitely most fantasy uh, a comic book movie. I definitely say that it's definitely a, more of a comic book film. I could definitely say the money was put to good use. The the definitely has a budget behind it behind the whole film. If you look at the film, it definitely has a big budget behind it. So the money was put to good use. Wasn't it didn't. For a big budget, for, for, for if you look at this film, you can definitely see the money did not go to waste. For like on the sets, the vehicles, the costumes, and you know, may whatever. And I would say the um, Michael Goff and Pat Engel, who as Alfred and Commissioner Gordon, because because uh, the, they're the, these are the only they're the only two. Of the main characters throughout this whole four film series that comes the that that reprise the roles for the whole entire series, they're the only two ones. So, at least I do appreciate that, and I still say that Michael Michael Goff is still the best Alfred still. Um, and I would say that's pretty much it. I mean, I mean George Clooney, he, he's not, he's not, he's. I would say, yeah, I would still say he's still the worst Batman, yeah. yeah I would say he's even worse, he's still worse than Christian Bale's Batman. Well, at least, uh, I, the only thing is I can't stand the boy, I still, I'd say, you know, Cancer Man, uh, Bat Batman, those films, you know, talking, you know, this and that, you know. At least George Clooney, at least George Clooney doesn't have the cancerous voice, though, but still, George Clooney, he's still the, he's still the worst Batman. Arnold Schwarzenegger's it's a this is now I would say this is the I would yeah I would definitely say it is definitely the worst film for Arnold Schwarzenegger I would definitely say that because because I'm sure a lot of people say that you know it was only because of the ice puns that, that he put the poles in the film that I'm sure enough people don't like that and yes I do agree I don't like the ice puns every every sec everything he says about the ice puns regarding about ice cool or cold or freeze or anything related to that you know like um. Uh, what's the, what's the word of some of them? Already right, everyone, chill, chill, cool party, um, what killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age. Tonight's forecast, a freeze is coming. You know, I'm sure, I'm sure everyone has, has said all those puns though, but, yeah. I just wanted to tell Arnold, you know, that this is... That he just, it just it doesn't work, and then plus for other casting choices before Arnold, they want to get Sylvester Stallone or Hulk Hogan. I mean, why? What's why they're getting all these big, huge actors to play? Because for I remember in, um, in the for I in the animated, from the animated um, cartoons in that Batman's cartoon series, Mister Freeze was more of a skinny, more more of a skinny guy, and. For me, the best part, the best pick, who I could probably think is, I guess, usually see Patrick Patrick Stewart to play Mr. Freeze. He looks like a Mr. Freeze to me. Besides, you know, for you know Professor X though and X Men though, but I can picture as easily him being Mr. Freeze. I think he would be a good choice, but without probably probably with that, if they didn't throw him all the dumb ice puns in, which I don't I don't see Patrick Stewart doing that though, because. I promise I've never seen Patrick pa Patrick Stewart doing so at like an over the top goofy character, considering how the way he, all the film roles he's been in. I could just couldn't picture that, but I would consider he was a pro a probably been a good Mr. Freeze. But I don't know why they had to go with all these big actors like Arnold or Stallone or Hulk Hogan. And speaking of Sylvester Stallone, yeah, I mean speaking of Sylvester Stallone, you know on how Arnold was Arnold is so laughable in this film. I still consider his worst performance. Same thing with Stallone when he tries to be a goofy character. And I also consider his worst film role is when he started in Spy Kids 3D as the toy maker or whatever. And all the dumb multiple versions of himself. One being a general, one being a hippie, and one being a, a bald scientist. 
We are you. Oh, I forgot. I, I forgot though. I how I can uh, exceed more of my powers. That still is. That's the, yeah. When yeah, still on. He's not fit to do all those. Do like what Arnold doing the over top, you know, goofy, silly, you know, stuff like that. That's like worst f will, worst film for Arnold Schwarzenegger. Spike is 3D worst film for Sylvester Stallone. Guys, these guys are not meant to be so campy, goofy, silly, and all the other those names of the book. I mean, yeah, growing yeah, growing up with the film as a kid, yeah, of course I enjoyed Arnold Schwarzenegger in the film, and you know, but you know, you get you you know you know bet you know better with age with with age, you know. But yeah, all those those other things I said that were the positive things like the production and the uh, Michael Goff and Pat Engel. That's basically it. This film just sucks on so many levels and just and I could yeah the film has a, and it was panned by critics as a eleven an eleven percent on Rotten Tomatoes as a three point seven on IMDb yeah three point seven think it deserves think it deserves lower and. And if, and for Sigmund Arnold Schwarzenegger, I think he got a, a he got like a, he got paid like twenty five million dollars for the role. <laughs> I think I think I think you should just, should just give him the money back for just playing this. But um, well there was there was a positive thing out this. I mean the soundtrack they got more got much more popular than the film itself because for um some of the especially for the song um by the Smashing Pumpkins the end is the beginning of the is the end. Which we're looking up, it won a Grammy Award for Best Hard Rock Performance. And um, I think I think I think um, the song "Gotham City" by R. Kelly got some praise of it as well. So yeah, I think the sucks. Yes, yeah, it's sad to say that the soundtrack of the film got much more praise than the film itself. But anyway, getting to it. Um, so yeah, it opens up. Of course, when it opens up, it shows more of the. You know the bad suits with the uh, bad nipples, cat pieces, and ass cheeks. You know, which yeah, they want to make it much more is much more kid friendly than all the other all the other films, even more than Batman Forever. And yes, yeah, so sure, the children should see yeah, because we want to want children to see that. You know, see all the bad nipples and ass cheeks and cod pieces. Yeah, but to Joel Schumacher, they look like Greek statues. And. But I'm thinking why well, I think he's going that wrong because I think I think I believe that Joel Schumacher he's um gay in real life. Nothing against that though, but I guess that's why he wants to throw that's why he throws in the the Greek statue thing for the bad suits. So, but like I said, nothing against uh, what Joel Schumacher is though. But no, I'm not gonna say anything against that. Otherwise, I'll get criticized for it though. But all I'll say is I'm nothing. I have nothing against it. So, but I guess he chooses what he wants to. So, can't, uh, can't really say for that. But it's not only just Joel Schumacher; it's the writing as well. The, the, such a, the film has such a bad script. I mean, it's written by Kivi, it's written by Kivia Goldsman, which he's written on on a lot of a lot of movies. But the, I would say Kivi to a Kivi Goldsman, it's, it's a terrible script, terrible script, all around. The score was not much. I mean, Ellie Goldenhall's score from Batman Forever. I thought it was decent though, but the the song, but with the score in this film was not much. Well, maybe I could say, well, I actually take that back. Maybe I would give it. I would say okay. I don't think it's not well. Look, so the the soundtrack got more praise, got more praise than the film itself. Maybe I can give some credit to the to the score to the score of the film as well. Because you know, songs and soundtrack sometimes they go together, so maybe we'll give it that. But yeah, it opens up after the. Bat suit opening. Then they get to the vehicles that the that Commissioner Gordon Pat Hingle tells about to Mr. Freeze. He's going to this museum to get the steelless diamond. And you see Arnold introduce Arnold as, as Victor Freeze. Freeze is some guards. And he says open one guard says, Oh please have show some mercy. Mercy? I believe that my condition has left me cold to your mercy. See more than another ice but left me cold. And he has his, his and his group of cronies, the hockey team from hell, what Robin calls them. It's the hockey team from hell. And you know, Batman comes in. Watch, I'm sorry, George Clooney. He's not a good Batman. Hi, Freeze. I'm Batman. And 
and then when and then uh, when and then Robin comes in, which okay, he has his more he's on his motorcycle when he comes to he come he bursts through the door, and for some reason, wait, how can he when he bursts through the door, on the door in the back you see the Robin it makes the shape of the Robin it'll signal for Robin. If anyone notices, I mean, how does that work? He bashes the door, and all of a sudden it forms into the shape of the Robin. I don't know how that works. And then very, and then very, very convenient where they have they happen to have uh, ice skate boots. Very, I mean, this, I mean, the stuff in it was the stuff like in Tim Burns' uh, first two Batman films with Michael Keaton. I wouldn't say we're kind of well. He didn't say the, the typical gadgets like the grappling hook and stuff like that, though. But when he fought like the Joker or Penguin or Catwoman, he didn't have something like com, like com, very convenient to help him out in, in that particular situation. I mean, here they just happen to have skates. You know, I mean that's a, that's some that's, that's like some of those things that um, people make fun of in James Bond films, where he happens to have one of these particular type of gadgets to get out of situations. I mean, it's James Bond, the James Bond, you know, it's just, people make, still make fun of those, though, for that, though, but here, it's just, that's just, that's just too convenient and very laughable. And they get to, you know, the fight scenes in this are not much either, I mean, they're, I would say, overall kind of lame fights, I mean, and very silly and goofy, you know, and not much fights. I mean, the fight scenes were, were much better in the Batman Forever, but... Here, these are just lame fights and too cartoonish. That's what I'm trying to say, cartoonish. I mean, you get some cartoonish sound effects even sometimes during the fights as well. Shows that this is now a kid. This is officially a kids' movie. Not no more the dark tone like Tim Burton did. Um. So then, 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 um. Then Arnold gets his pun by what, like I said before, what killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age. And like I said, some of the production values, like some of the like the, the the dinosaur breaks apart. It's actually all practical, not CG. I mean, there is some decent practical stuff, you know that that would be easily, but that would be easily CGI. I'm like if this film was like done today, everything would have been CGI. So yeah, back in the day, was, there was some things put money for the budget that was put into, like do some practical uh, things collapsing and stuff like that and breaking apart. So I guess that would be another positive thing, like the dinosaur. It's actually that it's actually a big dinosaur, not a CG dinosaur. It falls apart, though. This is how bad this is, this is how bad the film. I'm actually given some things to the past when it's some of it is practical, not horrible CG though. But it ain't saying much though. So they chase the so they chase and gets on this rocket for this. So I guess for this forgettable thing for the rocket, I, I, don't, I, I didn't really care. And to like he freezes. He free, when Batman gets in there, he freezes. Um, Batman's hands, which I don't understand why he could just just froze him entirely and left him to die there. So, but whatever. So he gets off and they both get out before the rocket explodes. They chase him down into the sky, doing surfing on the on these door hits or whatever. And he freezes a furnace and Robin gets himself frozen and takes back the diamond. And then and then one thing that the all things the app just happen to have they have these guns that they are they are very they are heat guns very those like one very very convenient they just happen to have those and then it, then because you know went back you know back at the house now it's discussing about Victor Freeze's past you know because reason why Freeze is doing this because his wife has this rare disease. And he's struggling to find a cure for his wife, so he freezes her alive till he finds a cure called McGregor syndrome. <clears throat> and it shows you because he how he cares about his wife so much, he's too willing to do anything to find get money and find a cure because he plans to he plans to freeze the whole city, hold Gotham Rants until he gets the billions that he needs to find the money to for him to for his research to get a cure. And then he has a cuss with um back at his um when it shows when it shows um his hideout you know it shows it's a it's much it's a cartoonish hideout because when you look at the hideouts like for like the penguin the penguin's hideout which is an old abandoned zoo I mean the 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 place looks more dark and atmospheric here his hideout is just a 
like a frozen ice cream place, and it's, you can tell it's much. It's it's cartoon. It's a cartoonish atmospheric, you know, comparing to the dark tone of Tim Burns uh, films. And Mr. Freeze is is like he's he's is teaching his his hockey team to sing. I, Mr. White Christmas. I am Mr. Snow, and he's wearing <laughs> he's wearing polar bear slippers. Oh my god, he's like, sing, sing! Yeah, sing! I'm sorry, just... It, it, it makes it sound so stupid just explaining that he's wearing freaking polar bear slippers and teaching his hockey team to sing and... Uh, <sighs> God, it's just... It's just so laughable. It's a car so cartoonish and just so very laughable. And it tries... You know, and then they throw, and then then, then Alicia Stillerstone's character is uh, Alfred's uh, niece, and then played by Alicia Silverstone, who was you know from Clueless and that thriller film The Crush, and also appeared in Scooby Doo Two. And then then it comes before and after, but we'll, before, well in between in between there it comes to Uma Thurman as oh well as, as her human name is as. Uh, the Dr. Pamela Isley. She, you know, she's like to wants to you know, with all the plants and everything. She's this plant scientist, and you know, she, and then she sees with, with this doc, uh, this uh, doctor um, thing. I think I believe it's also a character in the comics, Doctor Jason Woodrow, played by John Glover. Um, she witnessed she witnessed um, him creating a, a super soldier named. Bane, and, you know, puts it, put this venom to make him big and strong, which, you know, like how in the comics, Bane has this, you know, this button to make him, you know, enraged and stronger and mad, you know, she witnesses that, and then the Dr. Woodrow tries to kill her, you know, put all the, you know, jump, dumps, dumps everything on her, and then next thing when you see him, she, you know, rises up, you know, that she's mixed in with the plants, her DNA and everything. And when she kisses him, her lips are poison, kills him. And she wants to take over the world with plants. And honestly, I'm, um, I, I, I am, I know about Mr. Freeze though, and I, and I have heard uh, growing up about po Poison Ivy. But honestly, I don't, I don't think that Poison Ivy was not that. Like, like my dad, like my dad, he's not a fan of the penguin. The character itself, penguin. Like, explain my, I explained my review of Batman Returns. My dad does not like the character of penguin. Here, I'm not, I'm not, the, I'm not a person. I'm not a fan of Poison Ivy. I just think that looking at this, I think Poison Ivy is a lame villain. I mean, Mister uh, Victor Freeze. I prefer that that villain over Poison Ivy, honestly. Poison Ivy's just a lame villain. She her whole thing was to take over the world with plants. Oh, I'm mother, I am I am Mother Nature and this and that. And she takes Bane with him, and uh, I think that the, the Bane is played by this guy named um, uh, Jeep Swenson. And I just sadly that um, the guy is now passed away. But even though yeah, it's, it's sad that the guy who plays Bane he's passed away though, but. Bane in this film, like, okay, now they do, it's funny to think that, um, okay, you got the, you got this Bane in this film, and then you got Bane in The Dark Knight Rises. Now, it's like, it's like they have, like, they got, like, two, two, well, like, two separate Banes, but they don't put, the, like, the whole thing in one. Like, Bane in this film, he's, like, the big, he's big and strong, has, like, the button, you know, that makes him enrage more, and this and that, right? And Bane talked... But they have to be like Bane talking like he's the Hulk, you know. Ooh, you know, like bomb, bomb, or um, company, you know, like you know how how the Hulk talks, like Hulk smash, and like how like how the Hulk makes like sound like Bane is talking like this, and he's like an like an idiot. Besides being strong though, and then Bane in the Dark Knight Rises, is like because in the comics, where I read that Bane is a smart person, a smart villain. Like they 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 don't give him the smarts in this film. Besides him being strong, but he's given the smarts that he's been given the smarts in Dark Knight Rises, and but he talks, but make him talk goofy instead. I did not like Bane in Dark Knight Rises, and I don't think. Not, plus, I'm not a big fan of Tom Hardy either.
and the whole with the whole mask. Not that fan of. I prefer the mask. The, the mask in this film looks more closer to the comics than the whatever he had in the in Dark Knight Rises. It's like two. It's like it's like two. You get two. You get two opposite Banes. Like in this one, Batman Robin. He like half of him is correct. Like with the strong parts that they make him uh, talk like a Hulk and like an an idiot, whatever. And gets taken out very easily as, uh, as well. And then, but you get the other half of Dark Knight Rises where he is smart, but he's not that huge and muscular. But but I'm sure that band, but the band in this one, Dark Knight Rises, gets more of a pass than this one. But I think still think both uh, Banes are not great either. So, but there's like they've got both Banes, but you got this one here, and in the middle is just. They haven't, they haven't got yet, but I'm sure somebody else has com has made different co comparisons as well. But <sighs> but okay, moving on. Then Batman tries to you know uh, Bruce Wayne. Which I'm sorry, I don't, I don't buy George Clooney as Bruce Wayne or Batman. But he tries he plans to lure Mr. Uh, Mr. Freeze with diamonds because that's what he needs. So he has he throws us this party we like to uh, like a donation to, to these di donating these diamonds. So he plans to lure him there. <clears throat> um. So you get you get to this party and and then poison and ivy. Um, uh, arrives there, tells her, and I uh, you know wants to bid with the diamonds and everything, and you get another God, another childish thing. Like they're like Batman, Robin, like like first Poison Ivy uses this pheromone dust, you know, to make both of them fall in love with her, or try to make them make. Tr she's trying to make a fight over fight over her or break them apart, whatever. Like they start betting on her, and then Batman pulls out his pulls out a Batman credit card. Never leave the cave without it. And yeah, you actually hear the ching ching noise for the we we pulls the credit card. It's like this is this is this is a kids film now. Like, okay, why well, do you do comparisons? Might as well. Okay, Bird, Yeah, so this is how this is how this is how far how childish and cartoonish it has gone. Okay, first you get these two here, which are classics. Great films, great Batman, and great directing by Tim Burton. Great villains handled well. The film was shot. Both these films were shot well. The and I appreciate the how dark and atmospheric it is. Good ideas, great performances, directing, everything. These films I mostly I have practically have no problems with. I think I probably said them though, but I probably forgot, I forgot already though. But these ones I practically have no problems with classics great films and then 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 get to this which is a, a is basically it is a step down since Joel Schumacher took took over because the reason why I said it before parents complained about this film and parents got the what they wanted so they made they they made they sure they Warner Brothers ensured that it would take a step down and make it start making much more of a kids film well it's it's the start of it though and yeah, I guess uh, yeah, I guess I grew up with this film though. But I, it's not I didn't rant on the film because in retrospect, as I grew up with the film, and plus it got some good actors. You know, it's, even the Tommy Jones is doing his over the top is, and so is Jim Carrey though. But it looked like they were having fun with the film. Um, Bell Kilmer, I thought he was a decent Batman, but he's definitely a lot better than George Clooney. And Chris O'Donnell, I, I liked him as Robin though, but. You know, it felt it felt you know it felt bad at first when his fa family died, and he had a good reaction to his parents' death, and even besides even besides you know him doing that the, the the lame scene with him doing his um whatever movements with his laundry, and he was practically given nothing honestly nothing to do when he comes to when he plays Robin in the third act, except he got captured and gets saved along with Nicole Kidman, and he basically he, he didn't. Get the chance to kill uh, Harvey Dent. It was basically it was Batman. So Robin the Third Act was actually kind of useless, honestly. But 
Yeah, it was. It was. It, yeah, it was. It was, it was the start of the. Uh, it was the start of the step down and making going the cartoonish route. But this film, this film hit hit rock bottom when it went full on cartoonish and made a completely kids film. I think even all the features. I believe it was either Joel Schumacher or was Chris O'Donnell was talking, and or whatever. I think it was the commentary or the other features. They said they were planning. To make, it was basically a, making a toy commercial, and that's what it is. This is like an advertise a big advertisement for a big toy commercial. And I do remember. I remember the toys back in the day because I remember I used to have a. An action figure of Mr. Freeze, you know, with hit yeah, an action figure of Mr. Freeze with his freezing gun, whatever. Yeah, that's the thing. It's it, it's basically a toy commercial. It everything it looks like a toy commercial. The film looks like a toy commercial. Everything looks like about it. Looks it looks like it. You know, the sets. You know, even like I said before, the money was put to good use. You know, it does look like a big budgeted film, and it still looks like a comic book film, which I which I said though. But yeah. Probably was probably the film was made to sell toys, but I do remember growing up with this film, and I do remember the toys. I do remember the toys. I remember I used to have an action figure of Mr. Freeze. Goes to show, yeah, it is a toy commercial. That's why it makes you get toys, and I did get a toy back then. But yeah, this is how far this is how far when you compare, basically, to this, to this, you can see the huge difference. And you say, hmm, well, this this film is one of the worst films of all time. It's, 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 if I could talk straight, so someone's back and making me talk straight again. Get, comparing, this is a film that has a big step down. Went from its darkness and atmospheric and action scenes and act, actors. Compare, when we compare it to these, you can tell which ones are much better. I mean, I'm not going to make fun of anyone who likes this film. I am not going to make fun of them, though. But I'm sure a lot of people, almost, I would say 90% of the people hate the movie. And I could definitely see why. So yeah, after that, then Arnold comes in. More of a cartoonish fight with, with his bad guys. Then, Poison Ivy tries to use the Pheromon Dust and Mr. Freeze. doesn't work. Because he's, cause he's cold-blooded and doesn't work on a work with, you know. He takes the diamond and says, cool party. Uh... Then they get the chasing down this uh, Gothamish statue, and you know Batman's saying, you know, pull back, you can't make the Robin, you can't make the jump. He says, I can make it, I can make it. And then he decided disables his engine, and then Robin goes, he goes, ah, okay. <laughs> and this thing, you know, um, Robin. I mean, I like Chris Nolan in the in the, in the previous uh, film, Batman Forever, but this one, he's just he's just he's just whiny and it is and, ego, and egotistical. Because he has a, basically, yeah, he basically he's egotistical because he has this ego. Because oh, because oh, it's your, it's your, you know, it's your way of the highway. It's Batman and Robin, not Robin and Batman. And I'm sick of it. Yeah. He's, yeah so yeah, Robin has he has an ego problem, and he's just oh, he's just he's just whiny. You know, whiny, basically a whiny child or a pouty child, basically. Ugh. And then go back with Lisa Silverstone. Um, she she secretly tells that that, that that she has this thing with racing with motor, motorcycle racing. And Chris O'Donnell one one night Chris O'Donnell follows him, follows him, follows her to a, a motorcycle race. And yet, for some reason you have a, a cameo appearance by Coolio, who you know do you know takes you know bets on the bets on the racers whatever for the money. Okay, for some reason, okay, why why was cool cool you have a a pointless cameo in there? I have no idea why. So yeah, I was like, okay, Coolio is there for a pointless cameo. And then and then uh, after the race, and then tells her that 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 um she she has enough money to get Alfred out of there because she doesn't she she believes that he's not happy here or that the him. Being his, dedicated his whole life to serving a master or whatever, and then and of course back with Alfred. That they, they okay. I like Michael Golf as Alfred. All for all these films, he's still the best Alfred to me. But you got you got oh is this film is like a big basically a kids film. They have to throw in this um a sympathetic thing, a sympathetic uh, plot line because Alfred is dying and he happens to have McGregor's syndrome and is in stage one that 
Victor's wife has. He just happy. He just so it's basically it's basically a throw in sympathetic plot line, you know. To oh, we have to th we're we have we're this basically a kiss and we have to throw in like a more of an uh, I would say more of an adult uh, plot line to it. Oh, Alfred is dying, and he has he happens to have McGregor syndrome, the same thing that Victor's wife has. And we should we should probably feel feel some sympathy because you know because we're too busy having a making a kiss movie. We have to throw in like a a mature plot line in here, in this somewhere. I'm probably I'm, I'm probably saying people, oh this is like a lame joke you were saying. I'm trying to explain the best I can because if you get what I'm saying, if you get what I'm saying about with that though, but some people can probably explain it better than I can. I'm I'm just doing the best I can though, so don't blame me for trying. But yeah, so and then then they get to the thing again. Another thing they get the they have they got uh, after um. After with the on the big statue thing, um, he gets Victor Freeze. He gets arrested, gets thrown into Arkham Asylum, and Uma Thurman plans to uh, uh, spring Freeze out of there. And then you get an evidence, and you get you get seeing ev in the evidence locker. You see, on one side, this is the room right here. You see the Riddler's outfit right here, because which makes sense because at the end of Batman Forever, he was in Arkham Asylum, but then. On this side right here, you get Two Faces outfit, which I'm like, how do they get that? Because then at the end of Batman Forever, he fell into that spiky pit. I don't, I don't know. What, do they do they take do the police take all the time to find his dead body and then put the outfit right right there in Evans locker? So, but yeah, then you know Bane gets Bane gets his suit. He's like. And Arnold's like, a laundry service that delivers, wow. And Uma, uh, probably somebody kills these two guards by kissing them. Um, they, they break, they get the, uh, Arnold, he freezes the wall so they can escape. Then they get to the, then they, they eventually get to the, his, to his hideout. And they find, they find his wife. And, um, they plan, uh, Victor freezes this room where Commissioner Gordon and a lot of police officers are like, oh, my lungs are freezing. And then one of them, Commissioner Gordon, Pat Hingle, turns it off. Then, um, Poison Ivy uses more of the pheromone dust that she has to, to make, um, Batman and Robin fight against each other while also finding Bane. But, um... And then Robin he gets more mad. He's like, oh, you're just upset you can try to kiss her and not you. And Batman throws him to this pit of goo, green goo. I don't know what that stuff is, though. But but they both manage to get away. And Poison Ivy just uh, disconnects the cord to his um, to freeze his wife. Because, you know, wants to put the blame on Batman. Oh, Batman killed your wife. And to make him even more mad by to kill everybody in Gotham. So... And then we find out that then we find out that Alfred has McGregor syndrome. Um, then they might then they might that Poison Ivy uses the switches the bat signal for the Robin signal, and tells and and tells Robin Batman tells Robin's like, we will are you willing to trust me? Because he told you he said before about trusting each other and being partners about so will you trust me? And then. Um, Alicia Silverstone as um, uh, Bar Barbara, what's her name? Is Batgirl. She finds a Batcave, and Alfred happens to have to, she like she like he knew that she would eventually find it, so she has an, a suit uh, a suit for her, and then like it shows it shows like the same thing for you know the beginning of the film for the two for the bat suits you get the same thing for the girl for the Batgirl suit. So Robin gets there with Poison Ivy, you know, talking, and then she tries to kiss him, but then he's like, oh, sorry, rubber, rubber lips are immune to your charms. Pushes him into this water, it gets entangled, and then Batman shows up, and then he gets entangled in the vines, and then Batman Girl comes in, drops drops in. Not, not, not much of a fight. Then when then, then Poison Ivy gets defeated, and he says, 
And she, she actually says, like, how a villain says, Curses! Ah! <sighs> God, this is just... This is, it's not even, it's not even, it's not laughable in a good way. It's laughable in a bad way. And I'm just watching this, like, this is so horrible. You go, I mean, you go from Tim Burton's classic Batman, Michael, badass bad, Batman by Michael Keaton, to a seek to a worthy, great, great, solid, fantastic sequel, like Batman Returns, with great villains like Catwoman, Michelle Pfeiffer, and a, a great villain, I would say also a great, uh, Makeup, uh, sinister penguin by Danny DeVito, and then, then this just goes it just goes downhill after that, and this film just hit just hit rock bottom. So so after that, then got Mr. Freeze goes uh, it takes Bane and they go to that big telescope and it freezes the whole city. And here's where you get some of the money that's been put in with the, with these uh, vehicles. It goes on snow on the ice. Okay, the good look, they look good looking vehicles. I mean, you can tell they put money into making these. You know, with the with all these um, vehicles. Like I said, the budget was used well on the sets and costumes and even the the vehicles. Um. Then there's a pointless fight with uh, where one guy is and freezes a vehicle. He uses it throughout the movie. Then they get to the telescope, and um, they they plan to use the satellites to from the sun to re unfreeze the whole city. Oh yeah, with this one point, as as a big um, Mr. Freeze is freezing the city, like everybody's getting frozen, and there's one point where a dog is about to piss on a fire hydrant before getting frozen. Yeah, that's how that's how completely childish it is. You know? Oh yeah, here's a here's a bulldog about to. Uh, Take a piss on a fire hydrant and gets frozen. Um, and then so as they plan to uh, like uh, rob Robin back they go into front of the telescope to on 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 freeze these other reflecting mirrors and then you get freezes uh, catchphrase tonight's forecast a freeze is coming. So then they they plan to go back and forth with moving the telescope up and down. Then Robin, Batgirl, they get caught, caught by Bane. They take him out very easily, just with this big old tube that he has. Like they just barely kick it, and the tube comes off, and that's how Bane gets defeated so easily. And that's lame. And then, um, then there was the other, of course there was, there was other these other two people that they got frozen, but Batman saves them. Then. As he play, and then one thing, how it at one thing to another is that uh, Batman tries to start starts st he starts to unfreeze the city with the satellites, but then Freeze has a, has bombs planted to destroy the telescope. And as is you know, freeze in hell, Batman. So with the telescope destroyed, um, they plan to use these other satellites to reflect it from the because it's morning in the Congo, so they plan to use that to unfreeze the city. In which case they do, and then Batman talking with Freeze that uh, shows that he, uh, that a recording by Poison Ivy that says he's the one who did this to his wife, and he tells that you know that um, you can you know be be the person that you that you once were and show me how to save another life a cure a uh, cure. Because he, he has, he did find a cure for McGregor's stage one, so but he hasn't found the other ones so, up. But he has those, and you know, take two of these and call me in the morning. And Batman's like, I'll have your, I'll have your wife move to the lab at Arkham. You'll be able to do your research there, and he agrees to that. And and then so they, so he gives the gives the get he gives Alfred the the cure, and then back at Ar Arkham. She, Poison Ivy's there, and you know, saying he loves me, he loves me not. And then Freeze, not surprise. I'm your new cellmate, and I've come to make your life a living hell. Prepare for our bitter harvest. Winter has come at last. Basically, to get his re get his revenge of on Poison Ivy to what he did to his wa what she did to his wife. And she has an oh shit look that she's in for it. And then the next morning, uh, Alfred comes down. He's all better. He's cured. 
And then at least, uh, at least Sore Stone says, you know, we'll be par partners now, and they'll be great partners, and Alfred says, you know, we're going to need a bigger cave. <sighs> God. Yeah. As a kid who, um, who grew up with this film, yeah, I, I enjoyed it as a kid, though. And that's why, that's basically what it is, the reason why, because this is a kid's film. It's... I just, I just, I just, I just wonder, wish if, if Tim Burton would direct a third one, which I would love to have seen. I just wonder what happens, what if, what happened, what, what for a third, for a fourth one, how the fourth one would have been. Maybe Tim Burton. Actually, I would not mind if Tim Burton directed all four of the films. I actually would not mind. I would love to see how he directed a third film, and if Warner Brothers would have kept going with Tim Burton, he probably would have directed a fourth one. I would love to have seen that though, but. God, this film just sucks all around. I'm sure every, I'm sure ever probably a lot of people have done rants on them on 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 here. So rants on this film, but this film just sucks. Arnold Schwarzenegger is is his worst performance. He's laughable, totally laughable in this film. George Clooney, he's, he he is still the worst Batman, just slightly below Christian Bale though, but he's. But Christian Bale is not a great Batman either. But George Clooney is still the worst. Chris O'Donnell, he's just a pouty. He's just he's just a he's a pouty, egotistical child. That's basically is. He just whines, complains. Isn't about his ego and this and that. At least at least just Silver Stone. I mean, maybe but probably was supposed to probably say nice to look, nice to look at. Especially when she's I know when. She, Probably to the same where she's suiting up. I'm sure a lot of people say probably say the same thing because oh, oh, it's like um oh we don't need to see you know Batman Robin with putting on their suits and showing the bad nipples and the ass cheeks and everything. Oh well, then we got to throw in that when the oh it'd be probably nice to see, be a nice change because oh it's nice to see probably nice to see um you know at least at least the suiting up. And Uma Thurman is Poison Ivy, just a lame villain. I'm I was not the biggest not the biggest fan of Poison Ivy. Maybe I could accept Poison Ivy in the cartoon, in the the, the '90s anime cartoon, because that's another thing I enjoy about uh, Batman. Because I, I, the Batman the animated series from the '90s, I I grew up with that show and I loved that show growing up. The cart of that cartoon, I was watching it on Cartoon Network just before just before Scooby Doo came out, just through Scooby Doo came on after Batman. And probably I'll probably accept um, Poison Ivy in that cartoon show, but nothing else. In this film, lame villain. Oh, I want to take over the world with my plants. <sighs> lame villain. I mean, Al Michael Goff as Alfred. I still, I still like, I still like him as Alfred. But the whole thing is that the with that with this film as being a being a kiss film, we had to, they had to throw in a sad plot line. Oh, because he's dying, and he has to quit throwing out. So, and he happens to have McGregor syndrome, the same thing that Freeze's wife has. So, yeah, so we had to throw in a sad plot line right there. But, like I said, I still like Michael Goff as Alfred, and Pat Hingle as Commissioner Gordon. I would still say he was okay. I mean, it was nice to see both of them come back through all four films. It was nice to see that. But uh, the whole film is too is too childish. It's too cartoonish, silly, too goofy, too over the top. Especially Arnold's with his, doing his ice puns. So over the top. But like I said, like I said about what, positives, like I said about like Michael Goff and Pat Hingle, um, and then the I guess the the film had a much bigger budget, and the film, the the budget like, I definitely see the budget on the screen. It's definitely used well. And it still looks like a comic book fantasy comic book film. I can definitely see that. It definitely is. And also, I forgot to say, I've mentioned there is also the sound mentioned the soundtrack, like I mentioned, by the Smashing Pumpkins. The end is the world. The the end is the beginning. Is the end. And honestly, I'm sure a lot of people reference this. So if you think of this song, it's in the trailer for Watchmen. Probably thinking of Zack Snyder. Oh, this, I'm gonna take this song that was in this shitty movie, but I'm gonna put it and give it a better trailer. Probably was one of the if that if, if, if that was true, I think Zack Snyder. Even though I hate Batman, Batman v Superman, 
And I actually do like Watchmen. I prefer Watchmen over this film or Batman v Superman. And okay, he, I think he did a smart thing by putting a song like that into a trailer. And that's a DC film I like, but um, I wouldn't watch it over and over again because it's like basically like an over two hour film for Watchmen. I would definitely pick Watchmen over this easily. And then also um, the song by R. Kelly, Gotham City. I think that's a great song, you know. And I do have that song. I do actually do have. I, it'd be to be surprised. I actually do have um, the soundtrack. The the soundtrack in what where all my other soundtrack CDs are, because I do like some of the songs on there. I think I also like mind the song "Look Into My Eyes," and um, like I said, the film, the song by R. Kelly, Gotham City, and the end is the end. It's beginning is the end. And what was that other song that was on? Look into my eyes. Foolish games. But I think actually the best song was uh, Gotham City. And uh, like that, that song I said from... There was a trailer for Watchmen and um, Look Into My Eyes. And yeah, so yes, the soundtrack, production, uh, production budget used well, and Michael Goff and Pat Hingle, that's pretty much it. But yeah, but like I said before, growing up, as, growing up with a film as a kid, I enjoyed the film. But now I, I, I learned to adapt more and I film this film still sucks. I can definitely see why it's one of the worst films of all time. I can definitely see why it has such a low running on IMDb and Rotten Tomatoes. Um, big, bold, lavish, outstanding visual mischief from New York Times. Yeah, big and visual mischief. Yeah, I could definitely. Yeah, it's big. It's much bigger and budget and much visual wise. And the big, the vehicles, costumes. Yeah, the but yeah, the but the budget was used well. I could yeah, I could definitely see that though. But the film still sucks. Arnold, George Clooney, Uma Thurman, Chris O'Donnell, um, and, and Lisa Silverstone, not much either, though. Characters that just, just suck overall. The laugh, laughable things with George, um, not George Clooney, Arnold Schwarzenegger with his bat, with his ice puns, and you know him sing, singing, wearing polar bear slippers. Anyway, I, I, I got. I don't want to. I don't want to go too long for this film yet. Yeah, but well, I hope you enjoy. I hope you enjoyed my um, my reviews of the of the of the Tim of the Tim Burton slash Joel Schumacher series. Just going through this one more time. Just get out of the way. Uh, you can check them all out. And so, so Batman classic. Batman Returns. I would say also classic, and it's a great sequel. And also, Michael Keaton, still the best Batman. Still the bit, still is. Both dark, glorious to look at. Step a step down, but I think it's an all right film. Such a gross, such a especially in respect as I grew up with the film. But overall, decent film. The actors who I thought were there, okay, and with with some fun elements into it. But this, I got nothing to say about this film. It's a it's it's it hits it hits down at the bottom of the totem pole. Totem pole basically. It's the bottom of the totem pole, and probably should should be st stuck down some more and buried. Nothing more. Nothing, other than the few things I said that was positive, though, I have nothing to say about this film. It sucks, and it definitely does deserve it to be one of the worst films of all time. It sucks, and I hate the film. And yes, but and best and yes. If, and speaking of this film, I would say it does deserve deserve Golden Razzies. Forgot to mention. Forgot to mention about that. And the film did make some money overall. Forgot to mention about that too. Yeah, it made it made forty two million opening weekend, and it made one hundred seven domestically and over worldwide total made two hundred thirty eight million worldwide. And because of this, they canceled a se they canceled a sequel. I think it was called Batman Triumph. They wanted to do another sequel that involved um, Scarecrow and Harley Quinn. But since this film fell flat on its face, critical wise, they didn't they cancel the sequel. But instead, we got Scarecrow and Batman Begins, and you get Harley Quinn for the first time in Suicide Squad. I would already say that Suicide Squad is much trailer. From look at the trailer, it looks better than Batman and Robin already. But Razzies, 
it was nominated for for um, worst supporting actress Alicia Silverstone, and it won for that. And that was the only Razzie that it won. Other ones it was nominated for worst director, worst um, screen couple Clooney and Chris O'Donnell, worst screenplay, um, worst supporting actor both Chris O'Donnell and Arnold Schwarzenegger, worst supporting actress Uma Thurman, and as well for the worst song. Billy uh, Corgan, that was the end of the beginning is the end, which is the song that I like, though. Well, I don't think it deserved that one. But, yeah. Yeah, that would say that's a film I would say definitely earned, would definitely earn Razzies. And anything else for trivia? Uh, well, uh, I forgot to mention, yeah, they wanted, they wanted Val Kilmer to come back as Batman, but he was already, uh, he was committed to doing The Saint, so he couldn't. And, uh, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, after this film was, after film was completed, Arnold Schwarzenegger went for heart surgery because the studios were anxious about ensuring, uh, Schwarzenegger one of their action movies, so he couldn't get work until end of days, which was 1999, because, yeah, because this film was 97, and the next film he did was end of days, which was 1999, so, he didn't do any acting for that amount of period of time, like, uh, I would say, in the year. So no film he did was in 1998. And End of Days, I love. I love End of Days. I think it's an underrated Arnold um, sequel. I think it's an underrated film. And it's definitely better than, he gives a better performance in that film than this film. Um... Um, da, 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 um, yeah, Hulk Hogan was, um, Joel Schumacher's third choice to play Mr. Freeze. Um, Anthony Hopkins was one of the ones that had choices to play Mr. Freeze. And also considered, uh, Alfred to play Alfred in Batman Begins. Anthony Hopkins is Mr. Freeze. Maybe I could see it, but I would say Patrick Stewart looks a look, it looks more like a, a Mr. Freeze in, though, but... Uh, anything else? Da, 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 da. Uh, yeah, Pat Hingle and Michael Goff were the only two car two actors to play in all four Batman films. Um. Yeah, Julia Roberts, Sharon Stone, Demi Moore, Walt Winter play the part for Poison Ivy before Uma Thurman. I couldn't see them playing that. I couldn't see them. Otherwise, it would have been the worst roles they've been in. Who, if whoever picked to play Poison Ivy. Uh, yeah, um... Yeah, for the film, Arnold, uh, he shaved his head, painted himself blue, and wore icy blue eyes uh, contact lenses. Yeah, here's uh, Ed Harris, Patrick Stewart, and Anthony Hopkins started to play Poison Ivy. But, Joel Schumacher said that he wanted a big, strong, you know, a big, strong guy. But, so, the two other choices was Hulk Hogan and Sylvester Stallone. But... Um, by the way, yeah, and uh, also a thing, what was it, that's a thing, um, nah, never mind, that's it though, I don't want to go too long, I'm getting to the, to the hour, hour mark right here, so I'll better cut it right here, but yeah, Batman and Robin, one last time, sucks, and I hope you glad. I hope you guys enjoyed my get my uh, take on rant of this film. I'm sure, I'm sure what on what everyone else has done. But hopefully you enjoyed my overall my uh, review of the franchise, this particular Batman franchise. I won't be planning to do Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight Dark Knight trilogy anytime soon. But for this particular Batman franchise, hope you hope you enjoyed it. And thanks for watching. And stay tuned on the next movie review. And I will see you later. Bye-bye.